So white moves his pawn to e4. We play c6. This is Karokan defense. d4. And d5. We fight for the center. Uh, we will start with classical variation in Karokan. Classical variation is still one of the most popular openings uh, for white against Karokan. So white moves his knight to c3. White is trying to put his knight in the center. Uh, so if we take on e4, white takes with his knight and his knight is in the center. General rule in chess is that knights are the best in the center, so uh, white wants to do that. After knight c3, the best move for us is simply to, to capture pawn on e4. Now knight takes on e4, of course. And we want to develop this light square bishop from c8. So I want to show you immediately the difference between Caro Can and French defense. It's similar opening, but not the same. In French defense, we play e6. And now you see that our bishop is restricted on c8. Now we cannot develop our c8 bishop. On the other hand, in Caro Can, knight c3 or something else, we take here and now we play bishop f5 instantly. We develop light square bishop with tempo. Also, you see that we want to displace knight on e4. What can white do? Main variation here is knight to g3. So we will start with classical variation and main line in classical variation. This is the most still one of the most popular openings against Karakan. Knight g3, bishop goes back to g6, to g6, of course, that's only good square for our bishop. Now there is h4. Yes, so again, to repeat, this is main line in classical variation. After h4, you see that white is trying to trap our bishop. After h5, we don't have uh, we don't have square for that bishop, so we will make one h6. And now the best move for white is just knight f3. Now old variation for black is knight d7. Okay, let's play that move to prevent knight e5. So to yes to eliminate knight e5 threat because white wanted to jump there to attack our bishop with tempo. Uh, but we don't want to play this old variation. Okay, knight e7 is logical move, yes, but uh, we want to play something more interesting. So I think that this e6 move is something that we need. We allow white to jump on e5, but we will have later we will have good counterplay so after e6 probably the best move for white is just to jump on e5 like this to attack our bishop and to put his knight in the center it seems logical uh, after knight e5 we don't want to give our bishop so we go back on h7 after bishop h7 again best move for white is bishop d3 uh, bishop, our bishop on h7 is quite strong. So you see that we have this uh, strong h7 b1 diagonal. So white simply wants to trade bishops. So bishop d3 we have to take there. Otherwise he's going to take on h7. Rook takes h7. That that is bad, obviously. So we simply takes on uh, we simply take on d3. Queen takes. And now again we want to displace that or to trade this strong knight on e5. So we play a logical move like knight d7. And one more thing, we make pressure in the center. After knight d7, white has a few possible moves to play. One of the best moves and um, still main variation is f4. 
white has enough space for something like this. Now, if we take on e5, white will open his f file. So he's going to take with f pawn. Of course, we are not going to take there. We can play move like this. Bishop e7. Um, yes, also new move. By the way, main variation is bishop e4 check. Pawn goes to c3 and then bishop goes back to e7. But there is a huge difference between bishop e4 and bishop e7. We don't want to play bishop e4 because c3 is a useful move for white. So why to do that? Why to give white uh, opportunity to play useful move? Yes, so why not bishop e7 straight away? Uh, white usually doesn't care about his h4 pawn. If we take there, we will open his h file. After that, white will have strong attack on our king side. So main move for white is bishop d2 here. Yes, as you see, if we take, it's it's dangerous for black. Our king is still in the center and we opened his h file. Uh, after bishop d2, we have an interesting plan. We can take on e5. I said at the beginning that uh, if we take there, we are going to open f file. But this is something. This variation is 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 something else. So we have uh, exact plan. So you will see what we are going to do. Uh, f takes e5, of course. If he takes with d pawn, it's it's bad for for white because we can trade queens if we want, or we can take immediately here and then to trade queens. So here we have very good position. So let's trade immediately and. Uh, Maybe long castle. So you see that d3 pawn is weak. And uh, that end game is better for black. So in this moment f takes e5 is, is practically the only move. And now we take on h4. So we did two things that we said that, that they are bad. We, we opened his f file and now we are opening his h file. So we yeah we did some strange things but you will see why we did that. Uh, we we have planned to castle on the queen side. After long castle, f and h files are not so important anymore. Now probably best option for white is to play long castle to move his king uh, from the center. And now we are going to take his knight on g3. That's the best move. If we move our bishop back, we are too slow. After bishop e7, white can do something like this. He can play his knight to h5. And he has strong attack. Our king is still in the center. So we have an unpleasant position. We take on g3. Queen takes. And now we develop our g8 knight so again we don't care we don't care about g7 pawn you see that if we move this pawn that we are going to make some weaknesses there and uh, this bishop b4 move is possible and our king is still in the center so we don't have enough time for long castle so we need to sacrifice our g7 pawn if we want to to have a good position and best move is knight e7 Queen takes g7, logical move, and now rook g8. Rook is hanging on h8, this is practically the only move. Now queen takes h6 is something that most players uh, do in this position, so white takes uh, another pawn. At the moment white is a, a pawn up, but you see that g2 pawn is under attack and d4 pawn is under attack so we are going to take one of them uh, soon after queen h6 best move for black is queen d5 we activate our queen again we attack g2 pawn and now we attack a2 pawn too 
and there is one more thing we want to cast. That's it. Now white has two options. He can play king b1 to defend a2 pawn, or uh, which is, by the way, the safest move, or he can play bishop to g5 to go into complications. We'll check king b1 first because this is the, the most often move, most common move. So most players do this king b1 because it's it's safer than bishop g5. Uh, after king b1, of course, we play long castle. It's too risky to take on g2 or d4 immediately. After long castle, again, you see that d4 pawn is hanging and g2 pawn is hanging. So white cannot defend both pawns. Probably best option for white is to play this move, queen f6. Now our e7 knight is hanging, and also our f7 pawn is under attack. So what are we going to do here? You see that maybe it seems that uh, we have unpleasant position now, but that's not true. So now the best move for black is rook takes g2. So we give our knight on e7. So if white takes on e7, we have rook takes d2. So you see that after rook takes d2, his rook is hanging and it's uh, practically, yeah, it's checkmate. Rook d2, probably c3, because we want now to take on, uh, on d4 with our rook. So c3 to defend his d4 pawn, and now we play queen to g2 b2 pawn is under attack as you see so now he he needs to trade uh, rooks queen takes h1 king c2 queen e4 check king b3 and position is equal now you can uh, you can draw you can give a perpetual check like this queen d5 king goes back to c2 queen e4 or if you want to play this, you can play rook d7, but again, it's it's drawish position. So white can do something like this. He can, uh, on rook g2, he can take our knight on e7, but we saw that after rook d2, position is more or less equal. Instead of queen e7, white can play something like this. Bishop c3. So he's defending his d4 pawn. Again, logical move, he just eliminates queen d4 threat, and also he's threatening to take our knight on e7 at the moment. Now we need to defend e7 knight, so the best option for something like that is rook d7. Now our f7 pawn is hanging, he's going to take it, and now we activate our knight on f5. f5 is perfect square for for the knight. Uh, maybe rook h8 check. It looks like that uh, our 8th rank is weak, but I think that white has nothing on h on uh, on h8 on on 8th rank cuz we have well developed well protected uh, king so that's that's nothing. So we play king c7 maybe queen f8, and now rook d8. After rook d8, white can go into uh, endgame. If he do that, if he do that, you see that this, this position is, again, more or less equal. We are a pawn down, but... But we have very strong knight on f5. At the same time, he has a badly placed bishop on c3. Also, we have a very strong rook on uh, second rank. Yes, at the same time, his rook is passive on d1. So this is something uh, that happens when, when both players play uh, best moves. So... If your opponent play best moves, just you will have something like this this position, but not so many players know this variation like this. So 
don't worry you know this is just i want to show you main main variation we can go back just to repeat some variations here uh, again i think that black has good play here so i think that this variation is good for for black uh, so knight c3 classical variation in caro can okay by the way caro can is e4 c6 d4 d5 and knight c3 classical variation we take on e4 because we want to develop c8 bishop knight goes back to g3 bishop g6 h4 main line in classical variation h6 we want to go back on h7 now knight f3 he's trying to reach e5 square so we'll we allow him to do that we play pawn to e6 now knight e5 the best move for him he's using this to to uh, play to put his knight to play to place his knight in the center bishop goes to h7 bishop d3 white wants to trade his bishop for our strong bishop on h7 97 f4 bishop e7 not bishop b4 check and then bishop e7 bishop e7 uh it, it's it's better to play instantly bishop e7 and now bishop d2 white is giving his his h4 pawn so we take on e5 first f pawn takes bishop takes h4 bishop takes g3 queen takes knight e7 queen g7 queen takes h6 and now queen d5 we put our queen in the center king b1 the safest move for for white and now long castle after long castle and queen f6 we play rook takes g2 as i said and black has a good play so this is uh main variation what if white moves his queen on h7 uh so this is i think grandmaster move queen h7 so white doesn't want to take pawn on h6 white is trying to keep pressure on f7 pawn so when black castles on queen side white will take pawn on f7 after queen h7 we played we played the same move queen d5 again we put our queen in the center again king b1 now king b1 is is the best move so white doesn't have choice and again the same long castle white takes on f7 that was his plan and now knight f5 uh, after knight f5 again we you see that we attack g2 and d4 pawn at the same time so we will see what pawn we are going to take so bishop h6 for white he takes our h6 pawn and he's defending d4 pawn our move is uh, quite logical now rook takes g2 and bishop goes to c1 this bishop is quite exposed here on h6 so, so white wants to to move his bishop on safe place now we have problem uh we have problem on seventh rank you see that white is trying to put his rook here and um, he will have some threats there so rook g7 is probably the best move for us we are just we want to put yeah to bring our rook back on seventh rank and um yeah to defend our king so and uh, we do this with tempo so we you see that we attack his queen queen goes goes to f6 and we simply double rooks on g file black is slightly better in this position although white has an extra pawn our pieces are perfectly placed we will try to take d4 pawn in one moment also at the right moment we can play rook on second rank and uh, we'll try to make threats made threats on c2 so again i think interesting variation for black 
just in these situations don't be afraid to to sacrifice your pawn so i think that although we are a pawn down we have great position look uh our our knight is, is perfect on f5 this is much better piece than his bishop on c1 so that's the reason why why black has slight advantage so this happens when white put his queen on on h7 so i wanted to yeah i i forgot to to mention this variation i forgot to uh after queen takes h6 queen d5 now white can can leave his a2 pawn so he can move his bishop to g5 uh, i told you that this is risky variation for white uh, what white wants to do here white wants to prevent long castle that's it so that is his idea and he's just giving his a2 pawn i think yeah again this is risky variation so complicated variation but i think that after queen a2 white has good position now it's interesting that if white takes our knight on e7 we have forcing mate in three moves so we play rook takes g2 and uh, there is indefensible mate on a1 or if white moves his c pawn there is mate on b2 so after bishop takes e7 white is losing of course better move than bishop e7 is pawn to c3 now white wants to make space on c2 for his king also he's defending defending his d4 pawn now after c3 we play maybe surprising move but this is the best move in, in, in this moment we play c5 it looks dangerous to play something like this when our king is still in the center but in this position yeah this is our best option after c5 white can again take our knight on e7 now bishop e7 is possible so we play rook g2 again now rook d2 is the only move because queen b2 is a dangerous threat so he needs to uh, protect his b2 pawn rook takes d2 and queen takes d2 if king takes d2 we can take here uh i want to say that king takes d2 is much better than queen takes d2 okay let's let's check queen takes d2 first you will see that this is a huge mistake because we play queen a1 check and we grab a rook on h1 yes now black black is winning now after bishop takes c5 we can play something like b6 bishop goes to d6 and now maybe long castle and we will we are going to activate our rook to g8 and g2 so black is winning here yes as i said king takes d2 is much better than queen takes after this we take his pawn on b2 king d3 and we play c4 check why we do this we want to expose his king even more and uh, when he takes we will have open c file for our rook after king c4 we give a check on a2 king d3 and now it's the right time for king takes e7 queen check can check us on f6 and we go on d7 f7 pawn is hanging so queen takes it and king c6 after king c6 position is droish both kings are too exposed and this game will probably end with perpetual check so we have same number of pawns uh okay same material so this is the most probably draw So as you see this is dangerous variation for both sides especially for white so if white so after queen takes h6 queen d5 king doesn't go on b1 
so white moves his bishop to g5 we take on a2 and you see that there are some complications later but you need to know that black black has black has good position in every case so as i said this is this is main variation in uh, classical variation of caro can so we are just giving our g7 pawn here okay we can repeat this variation again e4 c6 caro can defense classical variation knight goes to g3 now we don't want to play knight d7 we play e6 knight e5 white trades bishops knight e7 we want to make pressure in the center straight away f4 bishop e7 bishop d2 white is giving us his h4 pawn knight takes f pawn takes that's much better than d takes e5 and bishop h4 long castle we take his knight and we play knight e7 after queen g7 we play rook g8 and our next move is queen d5 and long castle so it's interesting position and i think that black has good play uh, instead of bishop d2 white can do something like this h5 sometimes white will be afraid to give his h4 pawn in that case yeah he he push pawn to h5 uh, we simply develop pieces uh, by the way white lost a tempo with this move with h5 so after h5 we play knight g to f6 again bishop goes to d2 that's the best square for his bishop uh, after bishop d2 we play short castle again don't be afraid to, to play short castle uh, maybe just you have uh, you have feeling that white already attacked attacked you with h5 f4 uh, but th that's not that's not true because white have need need to play many moves to to attack us so our king is pretty much safe here on g8 after short castle best move for white is long castle and after long castle we play c5 we we begin with action on queen side and in the center after c5 white can take there that that is uh, possible and we take on c5 queen goes to f3 again if white trades queens f rook takes and we have very good play because white has some weaknesses like this h5 pawn or f4 pawn so uh, exchanges are good for black you need to remember that simplifying these pos positions are, are our idea so when you have chance try to trade as more pieces as you can so knight takes c5 queen f3 is better for him queen goes to c7 we activate our queen we move our queen out of this this annoying pin and also we put queen on this c file so c7 is c2 sorry c2 pawn is potential um target king b1 rook a c8 maybe c3 for white and now knight a4 black has strong pressure on, on uh, white's queen side we already have four attacking pieces as you see we have this queen here rook bishop and the knight also we can we can put uh, other pieces in in play like this pawn here or like this knight so black has good position and yes we have strong attack on his queen side after c5 he can play his king to b1 
King b1 prophylactic move, he moves his queen, king on safe place. Again we play queen c7, our queen is good on c7. There is bishop c3 now. Bishop c3 is a computer suggestion and I think that is, that's probably the best move for white. Again, now we are threatening to, to take on d4 and to put our pieces on c file, our rooks especially our rooks. So bishop c3 and knight d5. Now knight d7 is um, something that he probably needs to do. And now we have one move between. We have this c4 move. So we want to, bl uh, to block position on the on the queen side cuz after queen f3 queen e2 or something we we take this knight and we start with attack like this b5 b4 b3 or c3 so we have fast attack on on his queen side after c4 queen goes to f3 and now queen takes d7 and, and as i said b5 b4 b3 or c3 and uh, black has black has uh, very good play and uh, black has faster attack than white white needs to play something like f5 after f5 he can only take here but we can take with our pawn or with our queen and white ha doesn't have enough pieces in attack as you see he has this queen here and he has inactive knight on g3 why is this knight inactive because he can move this knight only on e4 but what is this knight doing on e4 and nothing special so as you see we have better and uh, better and faster attacks so i think that this position is good for black now you need to remember just to play okay so after c5 king b1 queen c7 bishop c3 95 97 yes as i said you need to remember that c4 is something that you need to play if you want to play if you want to have a good position better position if you take this knight on d7, again, you have solid position, but after d takes c5, rook a d8, um, his bishop is very good, and we have some issues here. This knight can go on e4, so just try to avoid this position, play c4 instead. And now after queen f3, just take this knight and attack white king. e4. C6, 